Tonight would have been the Sixers' season finale. I think they would have played the Charlotte Hornets. And you would have heard that game right here on 97.3 ESPN. Where would they have been if the playoffs were to start tonight? Well, right now they're the sixth seed. But I'll ask Keith Smith if he thinks they would have been ri- risen up the uh, standings at all uh, the, over those final 16 games. Uh, do you think the Sixers would have got out of that sixth seed? Uh, they they might have. They might have moved up into the five spot. I think it was going to be a battle uh, between them and Indiana for 5-6. Maybe they get in with Miami. I don't know that they would have got any higher than four, but you know, four, five, six, that was a, that was kind of their range that they were locked into. Now let me ask you, like if they if the season returns and we have something, are they a team that benefits from the pause? Well, I think they benefit from the hopefully Ben Simmons will be healthy right. and able to play because he was obviously going to be out for what looked like a minimum of the rest of the regular season. So maybe this downtime will have him able to go. I think there you can go two ways with Joel Embiid. It certainly isn't going to hurt him to get off his feet for a little while and maybe rest up. But then you worry he's not known as a guy who stays in super great shape. So, uh, you know, you, you might be a little afraid he shows back, you know, 300-something pounds. So we'll see. Uh, but beyond that, you know, the rest of the guys, we'll see. I think they're going to come in pretty much on an even playing field with everybody else. But definitely going to help for Simmons to get healthy for sure. Yeah, they uh, obviously, as we've kind of chronicled, they have one of the more interesting stories uh, with this pause because their head coach is such a lightning rise, polarizing discussion. Um, and you saw what the Bulls did. They fired Gar Foreman after 22 years, moved John Paxson out. They hired a new executive vice president, uh, president of basketball operations. Uh, so they made a, a, a decision during the pause. And you wonder what these teams that have coaching uh, coaches in limbo are thinking as there's no season. What do you judge you know, your coach on if you're kind of stuck right now if, where the Sixers are? Yeah, it's especially tough for a team like Philadelphia who was – kind of playing that card of, well, we're built for the playoffs. We need to see what we are when we get into the postseason. And if that doesn't happen, that's tough. Now, what I was kind of asking around the league a little bit, and everybody more or less left it is, yeah, no one's going to get rid of a coach in the middle of this because – If we do come back, now you're having to work a new coach in with new players in what's going to be a very short time frame. So I think what you're going to see is these teams that maybe are going to make a move kind of no matter what happens, they're at least going to hold off until the season is either officially over because we played it out or it ends up getting canceled. And then maybe at that point they'll look to make their moves on. Uh, today, uh, I guess, you know, some people got a little excited. Dr. Anthony Fauci said he could foresee professional sports starting again if teams agree to play in an isolated area without fans in attendance. It's something that you and I discussed a couple of weeks ago. Atlantic City, where I am, Orlando, where you are, uh, those were two places. But hearing him come out and kind of say that, does it make it seem more feasible that the NBA could take this notion of playing in a bubble city and get this season back off the ground. It doesn't, it doesn't. It does from the standpoint of the kind of leading medical expert in our country lending some support behind the idea. But what doesn't is you've heard these players and it's been, I've heard it now in the NBA, the NHL and major league baseball, all kind of coming out and saying, yeah, that sounds good, but I don't want to be away from my family for whatever the duration of time is. And then it's, well, what if your family could come? And they're like, you're going to leave my family locked in a hotel for months and months, and that's going to be where it's going to get tough. Now, I think ultimately money wins out. And there's a lot of these guys that are going without paychecks, and they're they're you know maybe starting to get a little tight money-wise in those things. And if it's going to be, well, say goodbye to the family for a few months and finish out the season or, you know, uh, take no pay, I think eventually it'll win out to go do that. So it's, it's going to be one of those things that's going to be a tough call to make. And the other thing is, I think what's being a little oversimplified is he was very clear. It has to be a true bubble. Almost, I think he used the term biosphere, <laughs> where it's like nobody goes out, nobody comes in. You get everything in there for the period of time you go, and that is it. So we're, it's really curious to see, you know, if if and when they can even pull that off. 
Yeah, and I know uh, on the baseball side of things, Mike Trout, you know, who doesn't say much, but today came out and said, a lot of red flags for doing that for baseball. I don't know if the basketball players would feel different because their season maybe isn't quite as long as what baseball needs to do right now, but uh, would the basketball players follow suit? What does LeBron James say about this? Uh, what do the stars of this game feel about being quarantined in a hotel room for what? How much... How much time legitimately do you think is left in this season? I mean, do they got to fit in three more months? Uh, what's, in your mind, this, the amount of time frame that still needs to be used to get through this season? Probably once you actually start playing, you're probably looking at about a two-month period to be able to pull off what feels like a reasonable playoffs. Just because what you're looking to do there is – you, they've already rejected there's going to be no single season or a single elimination rather tournament they don't want that they feel like that leads to results that just don't don't uh, live up to what the nba wants their champion to be so one of the things that they've kind of laid out there is all right well if we can come back in the playoffs we can do shortened series we can do some back-to-back but they're not going to play you know three games in a row and those kind of things they're gonna they're gonna space those those games out as best they can so you're probably looking at about a two-month period once you come back to play and then everybody has been can pretty consistent you need anywhere from three to four weeks leading up to it so call it three total months to to get this in and the thing i continue to hear is they're using labor day as somewhat of a uh cutoff mark of we got to get this thing done by labor day because then that allows us to get in for agency the draft all those things get everything done let the players get some of their time off and that's what's pushing the start of next year back a little bit and then we get into next year because they don't want to mess up two seasons if they really have to to just save the remainder of this one i want to get your opinion we had bobby marks on monday show and he had tweeted out a best case scenario uh which essentially had the season kind of relaunching the playoffs beginning in early july mid-august having the nba finals the end of august your draft september 1 start of free agency summer league september 10th training camp december 10th december 25th regular season opens i know it threw a lot of dates your way but uh mid-june regular season ends and he said this could be the precursor for this being the new model of the NBA. Yeah, that that is something that is out there. Now, we know back at the Sloan Conference, it was pitched by one of the Atlanta Hawks owners that the NBA – season should always should just be pushed back by two full months anyway and really start up about mid-December with Christmas kind of being the full like hey here we go we're we're ready to go but that's how a lot of fans think about it anyway and that gets them away from the vast majority of the NFL season we talked about the reasons why that could be you know not easy to pull off with the regional TV deals because now you're your conflicts with baseball are in there and those things. But one of the things is I talked to a couple people in the league who said, hey, we're nothing if willing to experiment and try things. And if our hand is forced a little bit to experiment, well, then, you know, let's make the best of it. Let's call this a grand experiment and see how it works. And if it does work better, then that's something we can we can look into. But it's not going to be something that's going to be a immediate switch. We might see that for the next season. That may be how it plays out. But you still got a number of years of TV contracts, collective bargaining agreement, and all those things that have dates that are locked in that you're going to have to look at and work around. So a permanent change is probably four or five years away. But if you can start testing it out now and maybe gradually move towards it, that seems to be something that, that all parties are considering. Excellent stuff. Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA. Number one, your thoughts on the horse from Sunday. Yeah, I thought it got better as it went along. If you only watch that first Trey Young, Chauncey Billups, it looked like they were filming with flip phones in the middle of a hurricane <laughs> or something. I don't know what that was. It just didn't look so good. Trey Young looked like he was playing on the rim that uh, hanging in the driveway at my parents' house that you know was bent and everything else. So that one was a little rough. Um, but as it went along, I think it got better. I thought. Uh, you know, I thought even though Zach Levine swept the floor with Paul Pierce, I thought their back and forth was pretty humorous. I thought that was funny. I thought uh, Chris Paul and uh, Ali Quigley did a nice job of it being competitive. I wanted to see more trick shots, you know, hook shots and 
throwing it by, you know, over your head backwards and those kind of things. But as someone explained to me, they're all competitive. They all still, you know, even though they know it's for fun and that they, they want to win. So that's why you can see a lot of that. But I know when I play horse, I'm throwing up crazy hook shots from 40 feet and everything else. So I'm interested to see if they get a little more uh, creative here in the, the next version of it you know, coming up here. I think tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow night is the uh, next round. They're going to air that uh, on ESPN. By the way, the ratings were not great. Uh, for it, but uh, and I guess if you're hearing the feedback from it, you might not be all that excited to watch it. But I'm imagining that ESPN now has a couple of days to try to figure out how to make this a better broadcast because I thought that was part of the problem. As you mentioned, number one, I attempt more difficult horse shots in my driveway, <laughs> and yes, yep. my basketball court was nicer than Trey Young's. And he's shooting the ball from, like, a dirt patch. I mean, it was like I thought the way that it was going to be was they were going to be in similar to, like, where you are in Orlando, where they have, like, a gym indoors like that. I figured that everybody would be in an indoor facility somewhere. And, you know, you have people in their backyard. I mean, uh, Tamika Ketching only had a half a driveway. I mean, she barely could do anything. So I thought it was a little bit of a clunky thing there. Let me get your opinion on this. The Chinese Basketball Association postponed their restart. They've been out since January 24th, which is a very interesting, my birthday by the way, but it's become a very interesting date uh, around all this stuff. But the Chinese Basketball Association has again postponed into at least July. Uh, does that have any impact on the NBA? Yeah, the huge impact on the NBA and I think all sports here in the United States. They were all kind of watching that one. That was that was a big one for their test that they'd hoped to be back playing uh, by the beginning of May. They had delayed a couple times, uh, shorter delays, and now they finally just said, you know what, it's just too much. And what you're seeing is, I, I, I don't want to get into the medical part of it because I'm far from educated, but it sounds like not, not necessarily a second wave, but you're seeing enough cases coming around and pop back up and there's been some reports of people testing positive for second times and those kind of things that just made it a mess and they they ultimately decided you know what we can't even stage this thing without fans so that's been their plan all along was let's get these guys back playing and there were even some talks which sounds as funny as it sounds with everything the nba went through with china this year and we're not going to broadcast your games that there were some networks looking at hey how can we put your games on tv here because that's how sports starved people are here in the United States. So now it's become one of those things where they're really looking at and saying, you know, it's just not ready. We're not under control enough to do that. And that's roughly six, five, six months from the original start of things. If you're looking at that, you're looking at, at this point, you might be starting to say, geez, I don't know that we're going to get in the rest of this basketball season, the rest of this hockey season. You may not even be able to get in a baseball season if, if we can't get things controlled quicker than they did. He's Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA. Uh, are you going to watch the Michael Jordan last dance on ESPN or go to ESPN2 for the explicit language? Oh, one hundred percent. I'm going with the explicit <laughs> language. I mean, I feel like I, I've been. I, we've been around enough of these guys to know if it's really uh, unfiltered footage. I don't want that many bleeps. You're never going to be able to hear this thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know how these guys talk when they're just, you know, kind of candid. So, you know, yeah, I'll 100% be in, and, and that, that's that's the only way I think you can enjoy it. That's uh, Sunday night, the uh, first two episodes. I think it's the first two back-to-back -back of the yep. uh, Michael Jordan last dance. So we'll have that to discuss and much more on the NBA with Keith Smith uh, from NBC uh, and Yahoo and, of course, uh, he appeared for the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thanks, Keith. Thanks. I appreciate it. Y'all stay safe. You do the same. Always fun. All guests appear via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.